Hi, I'm the Nuclear Rabbit, and today I am going to be playing a kicks in. And by today, I mean to say that I played this run in August of 2023. So yeah, I kind of forgot about this one. I just had it sitting on a hard drive for over a year, just waiting to get completed. And I thought it would be a fun thing to do to look at how I've changed my playstyle over the past year of doing this channel. Cause I looked back at this run like it was an old high school picture. The run starts off with me finding a gem shrine in the Blood Moor, which I followed up by specking into my final skill for the run. Wait, what? Final skill? Already? Yeah, so this is a Dragon Talon Assassin, which means I am going to be using the skill Dragon Talon to clear the game. And what does that skill do? Well, Dragon Talon is a skill that kicks enemies and knocks them back. On my way to the counters, I go ahead and drop to a nice and smooth 6 health points before making my way through. And in the tower itself, I drop to a casual 3 before getting my first save and exit. Oh dear lord, my first save and exit is in the tower cellar level 1. That would not happen to me at all anymore these days. Surely it won't. I'd never save and exit in normal. I make it to the countess and kick her in the nether regions. Don't worry though, this is a polite video. I would never save vagina or cunt to an audience. On my second run she drops me a full stealth and these days I would just move on at this point. However, in ye olden times I would just keep on farming her. And talking about farming a lot. Remember that gem shrine in the blood moor? I do, I go ahead and farm it a bunch to get from a chipped ruby to a perfect ruby. Dear lord it took so long. After completing my perfect ruby I go ahead and move things along towards Andariel, who once I finally start targeting her goes down in just a few kicks. Seriously though, this part was so frustrating to look back at. That is such a sloppy fight. Everything is just so messy, like there's a bunch of things still running around, I'm targeting the wrong thing, it's just a mess all around. In act 2, I go ahead and pick up a 3 socket shield and put some diamonds in there for some resistances. I follow it up by making my way towards the Horodric cube. The cube allows me to craft, which means I finally get to use my perfect ruby and craft a pair of blood gloves. Stats, life, but most importantly a bit of crushing blow. Honestly, these aren't bad at all. Moving along, I go ahead and kick things off in the maggot lair and once I have the staff and the amulet I go ahead and do the first thing that current me is actually happy about in this run and make the Horadric staff and equip it for the 50 increased attack speed. My first real item drop comes in the form of a set amulet which turns out to be an angelic amulet. The Duriel fight comes in cold and sweaty, with my knees weak and my arms heavy. I'm nervous, but on the surface the assassin looks calm and ready to drop bombs, but she keeps on forgetting to hit him, despite even having a combat shrine. Luckily though, the Dragon Tail and Sin is one of the best boss killers in the game. Seriously, even with the Holy Freeze Hour going on and doing its thing, this beastly build just drop kicks the bosses straight down to the ground. And I tell the hunters that it's enough with the trembling in their boots and that a hunter must hunt and they drop me a jade figurine as my reward. Following that up I grab the eye and squish a spider with my boots. At this point I have maxed out Dragon Talon, meaning that all my main skills are maxed. From here on out it's all preference. This kind of flexibility is amazing and kind of overwhelming at the same time. But I'll explain what I go and skill into during the run. Ormus ends up giving me an amazing ring for my Gitbin reward. The most important stats for this build are attack rating and resists. So getting a ring with 88 attack rating and a 5% bonus to my total, combined with 31 resists, has me feeling snazzy. One thing I haven't explained yet is that the damage for Dragon Talon isn't based on your weapon damage. You do get the mods from your weapons, but your damage comes from your boots. So a big part of playing a Dragon Tail Assassin is to always be on the lookout for those new shoes. Seriously though, look at how good this build is for one on one enemy encounters. It is just demolishing the council in a few hits. Very few melee builds will go through them like this, especially considering I barely have any gear so far. I go ahead and grab an Act 3 Fire Mercenary, he knows the enchant skill, which grants me attack rating, making me hit more things, and thus deal more damage. Act 3 Mercenaries are based on faster cast rate, so I go ahead and give him my stealth. To replace it, I use the Scalders my mom told me we had at home. I quickly come to regret hiring Fungi, as him blowing up the doll straight next to me is not ideal. I do have a cunning plan for Mephisto though, part 1 of my plan is to walk up to him, part 2 of my plan is to kick him really really hard and fast. It works and he goes down, I love it when a plan comes together. Following that up I gamble some new kicks, tri with 10 faster run, half freeze duration and magic find. 
Don't mind if I do. I go ahead and upgrade my shield to an Ancient's Pledge, which straight up saves my life in the Chaos Sanctuary as the Venom Lords kick things up a notch when they surround me and try to burn me like a marshmallow. Thanks to Fade and a pretty big health pool, I am able to make it through the Diablo fight without any problems, which honestly makes me very impressed with this build. Just face tanking Diablo while being a melee character is no easy feat. I back the Unleashed draws me a leather armor that makes my rare only runs jealous. Seriously, life, resist, sockets, this thing is amazing. What's not so amazing are these cursed angry cows in the crystalline passage. As is melee tradition, once the going gets tough, the build falls off. One thing that really surprised me about how I played a year ago is how sloppy I navigate around enemies. For instance, here in the Ancient's Way I get stuck in a completely unacceptable way. I mean, I managed to play myself out of it, but dear lord, that positioning should have never happened in the first place. I mean, I just know that that tile doesn't go anywhere, so why would I ever run in? A soul rune drops from some dead slashers, which will be useful for some rune words later. Fade once again proves itself as being an amazing skill against the Ancients. Boy do I need canopy frozen badly though. After the ancients fight I go ahead and use the soul rune I found earlier to make a lore. To improve my drops I also put some topaz into my armor. And this is the point where the run just gets wild. For some reason I decided to do Nilatar. So I made my way into the halls of anguish where an M rune drops for me. But I was editing this and I was just looking at it and going like why? Why am I going for Nilatar? What am I doing? After failing to remember for the life of me why I did that quest, I go ahead and use the am rune I just found to make a strength. This rune word once again proves that the developers hate melee characters. All of these mods are amazing, however 35% enhanced damage on it is basically a war crime. Speaking about crime, the amount of damage I chunk away in the bail fight is definitely one as well. For a solo self round run, this damage is insane. And after clearing bail, I go ahead and move along into Nightmare, where I go and kick wood, which almost ends up with me being encased by wood as well, as I end up escaping on the thinnest of margins. The ring I get as a reward for the quest has some attack rating and some resist, but it's nowhere near as good as the one I got from Ormus earlier. In the tower, another case of bad positioning happens. I just walk past some my devilkin straight into a corner, and looking back at that now, it just hurts me to see it. At least I made it out again, but me from a year ago, what are you doing my man? Well, the countess apparently, as she goes ahead and drops me a spirit rune word and a unique ring in what is possibly the sickest countess nightmare drop I have ever seen. The ring ends up being a 74-27% nagel. I use the runes to upgrade my boots, which greatly increases my kick damage. Another thing I would have just never done these days is moving on without getting a rhyme room worth. Cause boots are very heavy, I have a ton of strength investment at the cost of vitality. And even though you don't need vitality, getting stuck in the slowest animation on the planet is wildly dangerous and getting me into a lot of trouble. At least I approach the Antario fight much better in Nightmare. I actually clear out most of the enemies and lure her out. Kind of at least, the mobs just walk up to me again. Dear lord, everything about this run was just so sloppy. I'm actually kind of happy to find such an old run on my hard drive, cause it really drives home the power of consistent practicing. In the maggot lair I end up finding an endless hill, prompting me to go and hire a rogue mercenary. I give Kyoko Ono my new bow and all is fine and good. But I'm just looking at this and thinking to myself, why? Why am I moving to this mercenary? I mean cold damage is fun and all but what? What am I doing? Luckily she does well enough in the maggot lair and the claw viper temple, so at least no harm no foul. Well no foul at least cause I am definitely taking harm here. After the Claw of Hyper Temple, I saw that Mephisto was terrorized. I know it's the entire Durant, but let's be honest, it's Mephisto. And it gets me wondering what's in the box. Well, apparently it's an amulet, which turns out to be probably the most underrated unique amulet on the planet. A Nocus on Relic. Seriously, 50% fire resist is a lot. The Saigon's collection continues with the armor and the gauntlets, but none of that ends up mattering, as I go ahead and find another very underrated unique in the demon hide gloves, also known as Venom Grip. With damage, crushing blow and life leech on them, what is not to love? With the terror zone ending, I find myself continuing on and making my way to the Tar Rusher's tomb, where once again my sloppy play gets me in trouble. Seriously, it's so wild to look back at this, it's like watching yourself drive a car or a bike for the first time. 
Current me is wildly annoyed at not having Canopy frozen during the Duriel fight, but this build does clean up act bosses mercilessly, so I let it slide. Duriel draws me the weirdest looking town portals. They are inferno strides, and even though the mods on them are amazing, it will be a massive loss in damage, so no can do. And because I still have the angelic amulet in the stash, I'm hoping to find the ring as well, for the amazing combo of the two of them. But alas, it's a Cathan's ring. In Act 3, the dolls are a big problem. I have to run close and kick things in the face, which is exactly what they want me to do. Kyoko Ono isn't much help with the tanking either, so I decide to just cast Fade and hope for the best as I run into them and kick them down. Fade proves to be amazing again though, look at that, even with the unique and champion dolls I am barely getting hit for 40% of my life total. Honestly this is way safer than I had ever imagined. And if there is one thing to be learned from this video, it's respect yourself, protect yourself. As I head into the final part of the act for the console, I start specking into a shadow to make sure the monsters are distracted and not targeting only me. And after killing Mephisto, I make my way into the Plains of Despair, where I basically let the Fade skill carry me so hard, I'm surprised it doesn't get a hernia. However, back in the day when things got this hard, I just wouldn't push on and see it as a sign to grind for gear. So it's time to go and give Mephisto a rough night. His drops start off with a rattle cage, an armor that has the amazing crushing blow mod, meaning it makes for a half decent melee armor. Luckily, the dev saw this as well and decided we cannot have that. So they gave it hit causes monster to flee as well, to make sure that you stick to casters. The second drop is a Lycander's aim, and if I wasn't already employing Kyoko Ono, I would have switched to her for this weapon. Plus 4 to skills is amazing for her cold arrows, improving her crowd control quite a bit. He drops me another great pair of boots, unfortunately, once again, they are ethereal and they downgrade damage wise. Next up, he drops a unique partisan, an amazing mercenary weapon. And here I wanted to make a joke about the death of Kyoko Ono, but she is still alive, so I'm beetle to the punch. Oh well, honestly, good for her, I hope to make it to that age. The Pierre Tombal I found is ethereal, which is perfect for a mercenary, so I go ahead and employ Durga and give him the stuff. With Durga on my side I continue farming. Mephisto draws me the next underrated unique. Cold Seal Eye has a very fast attack, hit blinds and slows target, so even though it is low on damage this is another amazing mercenary weapon. He also draws me a gold wrap and an elder helm. If only there was a druid mercenary. A few runs later I get an amazing ring upgrade, mana leech, life, a pile of resists, what a beauty. He also ends up dropping me a shale rune, finally netting me my rhyme for cannot be frozen. And a dusk deep for the mercenary. The first really good drop of the run, goblin toes are one of the top choices for this build, thanks to their crushing blow. I will have to upgrade them though, cause they start out with quite low damage. But as mirrored boots, their damage will be amazing. I also go ahead and pick up a night smoke for some resistance to all. The next GG drop comes in the form of a set to death mask, the tall rusher's helmet. Seriously, this helm has it all. Life leech, mana leech, life, mana, resist, you name it, it's got it. Following it up, a unique serpent skin armor drops, which is a skin of the Viper Magi. This rolls with 20 to 35 resist all, so let's hope for a good roll, shall we? With a full set of gear farmed, I go ahead and retry to make my way into Act 4, this time easily clearing my way through. In the River of Flame, a Melrune drops, which in Nightmare Act 4 is basically a high rune. After Hephaesto exploding all over my face, I go ahead and destroy the Soul Stone, which nets me a Ko rune. The Chaos Sanctuary is filled to the brim, but the monsters stand no chance of stopping me. Who knew, if you farm forever, you are way stronger than usual. Seriously, I am spilling the secrets of the universe over here. A boss back in the Sanctuary ends up dropping me a unique Queeras, which is a Duriel shell. Besides the gross thought of wearing Duriel, this is one of the best solo cell found armors in the game. Tons of life, piles of resist and cannot be frozen are all in high demand and this armor has them all. A Doom Knight ends up dropping me my second Ko rune, so in the span of about 10 minutes I have found Ko Ko Mal and a Duriel shell. I don't know what's going on, but I am going to go ahead and agree with this. All kidding aside, this is some serious endgame gear that I've got going now. 
I get revenge on the Venom Lords by making them kill each other. And one thing I didn't know is that if you trigger the Diablo fight and have things confused, they will survive the trigger. The more you know. After that discovery, I head into the Diablo fight, who honestly, at this point, I just completely obliterate. If smiters didn't exist, I wouldn't be surprised if this build would be the best uber killer. With my new runes, it is time to upgrade my shield, cause Coco Mel makes for a sanctuary rune with, which has a bunch of mods, but most importantly can roll 50 to 70 resist all. So let's try and do better than on the Viper Magi, shall we? So I create my sanctuary and I create my very fancy version of the ward. Seriously though, what a roll. Back to back worst resist rolls on items. I'm so unlucky. Oh well, at least it's still an upgrade from my rhyme. After creating my sanctuary, I apparently decided that it is time to go and create a crushing blow and slow enemy mercenary. So I go ahead and rent a bar. In the frigid highlands I end up finding a grand charm, which turns out to be a lightning skiller. Speaking of lightning, welcome to the frozen river, which is full of it. But after clearing that and getting my resist, I make my way down to the halls of Vard and free Nilly. I have a close call with the dolls in the throne room, but it all ends up fine. Well, as fine as you can call her might aura list of the tormentor. The shadow helps me with the thanking, but the second she goes down I almost follow suit. Luckily with the power of mind blast I manage to stun the minions and Falkwald and my shadow take care of them. The bale fight itself turns out to be easy so Falkwald goes and takes a nap to get some rest while the shadow and I deal with the big man himself. To hell we go. The fight with corpse fire goes well as long as I actually make sure to crowd control properly. But despite this den of evil feeling so bad I decided to push on anyway, knowing that I will get a bunch of levels naturally. In the tower I end up dropping my second skiller of the run, a Jav skiller, before heading into the Andariel fight, which once again goes way sloppier than I would ever do these days. But I'm sure seeing me running around and panicking and having to do damage control is much more entertaining for you guys. So here you go. After the Andariel fight I go ahead and upgrade my goblin toes, which isn't a direct upgrade to my damage, but it does give me an additional 25% crushing blow, which will help out a ton. To get even more damage I go ahead and create the room with black, granting me an additional 40% crushing blow. The knockback isn't a downside on this build, cause Dragon Talon always has knockback. I also go ahead and craft some 10 crushing blow 22 cold resist gloves with a bit of life and magic find. And to improve on my safety, I switch mercenaries yet again, this time welcoming ASAP the Holy Freeze mercenary to the team. And to keep him alive, I give him the Viper skin instead of the Rattle Cage. Can't do crushing blows from the grave after all. At this point, my damage feels low and I don't feel safe at all, which means it is time to take a long, hard look at myself and think, because maybe a Dragon Talon sin isn't really my thing. Maybe I should just turn into a Hammerton and forget all about these obscure skills that I have to grind and play in order to win. So after taking that long hard look at myself I figure out what is wrong. So I decide to go for a respec. I go for 163 strength cause that's what is required for mirror boots. The rest goes into vitality. And if you're thinking boy that is a lot of attack rating. It sure is cause I picked up an angelic's ring along the way. Somewhere during all the grinding and only realized at this point that I had missed the footage. So instead of going back through 20 hours of footage, I decided to just explain it instead because it's, well, it's an angelic ring, they're not like rare or anything, so. So anyway, my apologies for that, but I did find one somewhere in the grind. I did like hours of Mephisto runs, you can figure it out. So let's move along. Skill-wise, I go ahead and spec into Max Dragon Talon again, cause otherwise it will be a weird video. I put a point into Dragonflight, which is a kick that teleports you to your target. I go ahead and max Venom as well, to get a bunch of poison damage added to my kicks. 
which will help with physical immunes and allows you to reposition your mercenary and your shadow, which I put some points into as well. This time however, I figured out that my problem was that I don't have enough AoE, so I decide to go ahead and spec into that sentry, which is a trap that shoots lightning and blows up corpses to deal damage. With all of these skills I actually max out my usable skills for the first and last time since I started playing the game, and with 75% crushing blow, 1400 HP, cannot be frozen and a suite of skills at my every command I go ahead and head into act 2, where I immediately almost die to a bunch of John Lennons. Good thing I won't see more of those. Does anyone know what foreshadowing means? Cause well I do see more of those, the maggot lair is filled to the brim with them, it should have been called the beetle lair. And every single one drains my life total. Luckily thanks to death sentry every kill becomes a dead one get one for free type of deal. And between venom and the death sentries, physical immunes aren't much of a problem either, resulting in a very reasonable journey throughout the maggot lair. The salamanders can be very dangerous, but between ASAP's holy freeze, the shadow's constant interference and my cloak of shadows, they are completely divided and conquered, allowing for easy passage through the temple, during which I never almost die ever, absolutely not, nothing happened here at all. All kidding aside, even with all my fancy gear, cool skills and who knows what else, this build is struggling to get through the Claw Viper Temple. Even with Fade Up, everything feels like a huge risk and honestly at this point I don't know how to fix it. So I just decide to push on and hope for the best, straight into the broader soul burn. I don't know why, but I thought it was absolutely gravy that these two super unique spawned with the exact same name. I mean, they are basically just twins Basil, twins. All in all, I definitely didn't fall asleep on this part. I go ahead and almost die one final time against Fangskin before picking up the amulet. To give some more perspective on how frail this is feeling, the harem is usually one of the safest spots in the game, it's just a static map that never changes and you can easily run through without a problem. I mean, usually this area doesn't even end up making it into the videos, cause nothing happens here. Except this time, I almost didn't make it through, I had to walk the long way around cause things were too dangerous. I used the gold bellies confusion to make them hurt themselves. Unfortunately, champions and uniques are still a problem, so I get pushed back hard but do end up taking all of them out. That last unique did die hard with a vengeance though, seriously that was like a 1000 HP swing right there at the end. This build is an amazing boss killer, so the Duriel fight isn't much of a problem. Sazak and his friends end up pushing me back through the spider cavern, and while I am able to take one of them out at a time. I'm cursed and surrounded. I start looking for a good position to fight from, but don't end up finding one. So I go ahead and re-roll the whole thing. Cause it's better to re-roll than to have to start from X1 normal. In the second attempt, I casually took the eye without Cezark even noticing. In the Flayer jungle, I end up finding a 5 socket treasure, which is an amazing base for an honor. And if you're running to the comment section right now about how I should make an obedience, yes, I would love that, I would love to make an obedience, but I don't have the runes, so I can't. The introduction between ASAP and the dolls goes, let's call it not amazing. So the Flayer dungeon ends up turning into a giant mess. I end up using the door to reposition ASAP and the shadow. The onslaught of doors continues, but luckily they get stuck in a door this time. And boy let me tell you though, I am so happy that this is the last I will ever see of doors. What did foreshadowing mean again, can anyone tell me? In the Kuras Bazaar I have a sudden epiphany that I should go the other way for no reason at all, but coming out of the ruined temple my choices seem to have caught up with me. Refusing to take responsibility of my choices I go ahead and press the escape button. A mere 10 seconds after making that totally obvious last of them joke, I run into another boss pack of dolls in the sewers. They say hello to ASAP before moving on to me and my shadow. To improve on ASAP's chances of survival I go ahead and make that honor I just talked about. Which helps him out a ton, just like me he ends up lasting almost 2 seconds this time. It's the small things that make me proud. After all that struggling the duality of this build really shows in the council fight, where usually this is one of the hardest fights in the game, I just mow through them at lightning speed. Having defeated them, I make my way into the Durans of Hate, where I am greeted at the door by a cursed doll boss pack. 
Luckily, I managed to move away out of the explosion and get to walk a few millimeter until the next pack. And at this point I think the game just feels guilty at how many dolls it has thrown my way cause a unique treasure drops by way of an apology. The unique treasure is a reaper stall, it has enhanced damage, ignore targets defense, life leech, deadly strike, minus requirements and most importantly it has a 33% chance to cause decrapify on striking. So what the decrapify or decrap as people call it does is it makes things half speed and deal half the damage, which is good for your survivability. This is a best in slot mercenary item. This item is the nuts. From here on out everything will always be decrapified, meaning everything will move like it's underwater and its damage will be halved. I mean just look at what happens in this Mephisto fight, seriously 10 out of 10 fight, no notes, absolutely destroyed him. And thanks to the power of the Crapify, walking through Act 4 becomes a breeze. The Crapify also removes physical immunity, so even though I already had that covered, now I've really got it covered. Isual and Hefasto go down without a hitch, and I get yet another co rune from the Hellforge. Luther would be proud. I make my way into the Chaos Sanctuary, where I end up finding mirrored boots. I never did end up getting the runes to upgrade the Goblin Toes, but the damage increased from 3764 to 5145 is too much to ignore. I lose out on some crushing blow, but I more than double my damage output. And now it's time to kick ass and chew bubblegum, and I'm all out of gum. I take down the Chaos Sanctuary, Diablo and Shank before deciding that I might as well start using my socket quests. And this is the final thing that I would have done differently this day. I don't understand why I put a perfect topaz in there, I already have all the items I could ever need. So these days I would just put in a perfect ruby or diamond to increase my life pool or my attack rating. The perfect topaz are win more decisions that weren't necessary and could have been used as a way to increase my odds to not die. It doesn't end up mattering in the end, but it's just another thing that I noticed I would have done differently these days. After the socket quest it is time for the final run up the mountain for the ancients. And the first ancients fight lasts about 3 seconds, like me. I tell them that never happens and straight up do it again. At this point I'm just re-rolling them until I don't get cursed. I'm sure I can take it, but the same can't be said for Asap and my shadow. So I re-roll them a few more times and we take them down in a very easy 3 on 3. With the ancients down it is time for the final gauntlet. The worldstone keep and the throne of destruction are filled to the brim with souls, but not even those are a problem anymore, which is just showing off how powerful the Crapify actually is. The rest of the run goes without a hitch. I mean just look at that beauty of a bail fight. That is probably the best bail fight I have ever had on this channel. Just completely murdered him. Gear wise I have a black, a Durial shell, a Talraset mask, the angelic combo, the sanctuary, the sanctuary shield, white mirrored boots that I forgot to imbue, which would have been an easy upgrade, a rare ring and belt with some resist and my crafted gloves. Stat wise it's strength for gear and the rest into vitality. Skill wise I have a bunch of points into Fate, one into Mind Hammer and Cloak of Shadows, I maxed Venom and I was putting points into the Shadow Warrior with my current level ups. I've obviously maxed out Dragon Talon and I have one point into Dragonflight for repositioning purposes and for AoE I have 10 points into Death Century. The Mercenary is wearing an Undead Crown, the Amazing Reaper Stole and a skin of the Viper Magi. With the run completed I just want to say thank you all for watching. If you're still here please check if you're subscribed, it does help out a ton. And I will see you all in the next one.